Welcome to today's lesson, Building Mathematical Models. In general, mathematical models means we're going to be doing word problems. And there really is no reason to be afraid of word problems. All it takes is a little practice. So we're going to work our way through four different examples showing how we can build a model for a specific type of problem. Example one. A rectangle has one corner in quadrant one on the graph of y equals 25 minus x squared. That's right here. Another at the origin. A third on the positive y-axis. And a fourth on the positive x-axis. And it wants us to express the area of the rectangle A as a function of x. So one thing you have to keep in mind is that depending on where on the graph of 25 minus x squared that this point lies, it's going to affect the size of the rectangle. If the point's up here, then the rectangle becomes tall and skinny. If the point is down here, it's going to be short and fat. In this case, though, we're just trying to work with some general point x, y. So I always start these by writing the formula for what I'm being asked to find using terms that I'm familiar with. So the area of a rectangle, we could say that it is um, length times width. And I'm going to label this side the length and that side the width. Now in the scope of this picture, we know that this point right here is x0 and we know this point is the origin. So the length of this side is actually x units. So L is equal to x. Now we can use the same idea here and we can recognize that the width is equal to y units. Now keep in mind that as we're sliding along this graph, y is going to change because y is a function of x. So I know that y is equal to 25 minus x squared, so I'm going to say that w, which is equal to y, is equal to 25 minus x squared. So if I put it all together, now I've got the area as a function of x, and that's going to be x times 25 minus x squared. Part B, what is the domain of A? So we need to know what values of x will work in this model. Now certainly a rectangle cannot have any area if its length and width are not positive. So we know that L has to be greater than zero and W has to be greater than zero. If L is x, then we know that x has to be greater than zero. If W is 25 minus x squared, that also has to be greater than zero. Now this will simplify into x squared has to be less than 25, and if I take the square root of both sides, I get that x has got to be between five and negative five. Now if I do the overlap of these two inequalities, the domain is going to be x such that x has to be between zero and five. Example two, a manufacturer of children's play pens makes a square model that can be opened at one corner and attached at right angles to a wall. You can see it here in the figure. If each side is three feet in length, the open configuration doubles the available area in which the child can play from nine square feet to 18 square feet. Now suppose that we place hinges on the outer corners to allow for a configuration like the one shown. So basically we have hinges here, here, and here, and we're squeezing the two opposite sides closer together so that these sides pop out. Part A, we're going to build a model that expresses the area A of the configuration shown as a function of the distance x between the two parallel sides. So it might be easier if I redraw this as if we're looking down on it. So this is 3, this distance here is x, this is 3, this is 3, and this is 3. And then we've divided this shape into a rectangle and a triangle with a height h. So in order for us to find the area, we need to write the area of the rectangle and the area of the triangle and we would add them together. So the area of the rectangle has got to be the length times the width. In this particular case, that gives us three times x. 
Now the triangle is a little more challenging. If we were to, we know that the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. Now in this picture, the base is equal to x, but the height is trickier. So let's just take a little triangle out of the big triangle. We know that this side would be h, we know the hypotenuse would be 3, and we know that since we've cut the base in half, this would have to be 1 half x. Now because the height is perpendicular to the base, we know that this is a right triangle, so we can use Pythagorean theorem to form a relationship between the sides. So we know then that h squared plus 1 half x squared is equal to 3 squared. So if we solve this for h squared, we get h squared is equal to 9 minus x squared over 4. Now this would be a little easier to work with if I added the fraction. So by making a common denominator, I'm going to get that h squared is equal to 36 minus x squared over 4. And then if I take the square root of both sides and only choose the positive root, I will get that h is equal to the square root of 36 minus x squared over the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. Now that I know the height, I can put this together to get the area of the triangle, and that will be equal to 1 half the base, which is equal to x, times the height, which is the square root, 36 minus x squared, all over 2. And if I combine this together, I get x over 4 times the square root of 36 minus x squared. So finally, the total area as a function of x is going to be the area of the rectangle, 3x, plus the area of the triangle, which is x over 4 times the square root of 36 minus x squared. Part B, find the domain of A. Well, we know that x has got to be greater than 0, otherwise the rectangle will have no area, so we know x must be greater than 0, but we also have a part of the height that's underneath a radical, and in order for this to give us a real number, what's underneath the radical, 36 minus x squared, has got to be a positive number. So if I were to simplify this, I would get that x squared has to be greater, less than 36. And if I take the square root of both sides, I find that x must be between 6 and negative 6. So if I combine this with this, I get that the domain must be x such that x has to be between 0 and 6. So in the first two examples, we practice creating a model for an area just as a function of one variable, in this case a function of x. In the next two examples, we're going to use our knowledge of quadratics and the graphs of parabolas to be able to do more with these models that we set up. Example 3, a farmer has 1,600 yards of fence to enclose a rectangular field. What are the dimensions of the rectangle that encloses the most area? So again, we start by writing the area of a rectangle using the variables that are on the picture. So instead of length times width, it's x times w. Now they want us to find the dimensions that encloses the most area. In order for us to do this, we have got to write the area just as a function of x. So we have to look at how can we relate the width to x. Well, they gave us another piece of information, 16 yards, 1,600 yards of fence. That corresponds to the perimeter. Now we know that the perimeter, which is equal to 1,600, based on the variables in our picture, the perimeter would have to be 2x plus 2w. Now I can divide everything by 2 and I'll get 800 is equal to x plus w and if I solve for w I get w is equal to 800 minus x. Now I'm going to substitute this in for w and the area as a function of x is going to be x times 800 minus x. We can simplify this to 
negative x squared plus 800x. So they didn't just ask us to write this as a function of x. They want us to figure out what would give us the maximum area. Well, we know we're looking at a quadratic function, and quadratic functions will have their maximum or minimum, but in this case a maximum because it's opening down at the vertex. So if we locate the vertex by saying x equals negative b over 2a, we get negative 800 over 2 times negative 1, which gives us x is equal to 400. When x is equal to 400, and we plug that in to our equation for w, we get w is equal to 800 minus 400, which is also equal to 400. So the dimensions that give a maximum area are 400 yards by 400 yards. Example 4. The Golden Gate Bridge, a suspension bridge, spans the entrance to San Francisco Bay. Its 746 foot tall towers are 4,200 feet apart. The bridge is suspended from two huge cables more than 3 feet in diameter. The 90 foot roadway is 220 feet above the water. The cables are parabolic in shape and touch the road surface at the center of the bridge. Find the height of the cable at a distance of 1,000 feet from the center. So they gave us a lot of information in this problem and some of it is useful and some of it is not. We're lucky that we've been provided for, with a picture. So you can see that we have our towers that are 4,200 feet apart. They also tell us that the roadway is 220 feet above the water. So when the towers are 746 foot tall, they're really only 526 feet higher than the roadway. They want us to find the height of the cable at a distance of 1,000 feet from the center, which is right around here. What we have to do is we're going to have to write an equation for this parabola. Normally in a problem like this, it would be up to us to superimpose an xy coordinate system over the picture so that we could write the equation for the parabola. They've actually done this for us and you can see that the roadway is the x-axis and the center of the bridge is the y-axis. And so right here is the origin and that means that the vertex of the parabola is at the origin. So we know that in vertex form, the equation of a parabola is y is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k, where h and k are the vertex, which in this case are both equal to zero, and x and y are any point on the parabola. Well, I'm going to choose this point right here, 2100, 526 to be my point. So I'll replace y with 526. I don't know what a is. I'll substitute in a 2100 for x and a 0 for h and a 0 for k. And what I wind up with is that a is equal to 526 over 2100 squared. Now that I know a, I can write an equation for my parabola. Remember that h and k are both zero, so really my parabola is just going to be y equals a x squared, or in this case, y is equal to 526 over 2100 squared times x squared. Now that I have an equation for my parabola, I am able to calculate y when x is equal to 1000. So basically y of 1000 is equal to 526 over 2100 squared times 1000 squared. This gives us a height of 119.3 feet when x is equal to 1000. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.